Hi there, my name is Dana Willis and I'll be your host for this first in a three-part series on cell phone operating systems. I'll be talking about the file structures that you might find in the many and varied cell phones out there as a view from 30,000 feet. I'll try to give you some helpful ways to be ready for the state of constant change which these platforms present. Tony Lambert will be presenting on common artifact locations next and John Martineau will round out this discussion with a demo of some of the virtual environments examiners can use to get more familiar with the OS structures. Okay, so first off, Android. So the challenges of Android really begin with its variety. There are many different possible variants, and the key as an investigator is to follow the data, much as an investigator investigating fraud follows the money, from my perspective. For example, each application in an Android environment will store some useful data, conveniently in the folders which bear its name. For instance, Facebook data will be in folders that bear its name Facebook. In the example on screen here, the HTC Contacts folder contains a database of, you guessed it, contacts in wonderful SQLite format. This might not be the only place for data to reside, but it is an important first step in understanding where data is corralled. As the folder structure in the previous slide showed, there are some basic folders that you'll want to know about that live in the data folder. They'll follow roughly the four foldering structures mentioned above, but there are variants depending on the needs of the application and its functionality. If you noticed that the shared preferences replaced files in the, in the, in the previous slide, you're beginning to understand that there are many possible foldering structures and many possible data. It's important that you examine each of the foldering structures for these as any of them might contain data of interest. Many of the data structures are in SQLite format, such as browser caches, which can be parsed using tools such as SQLite database viewers. These can be pretty unwieldy to use and do not present data as nicely as some commercial packages, but they still allow an investigator to review them in a relatively straightforward manner. The nice thing about our first practical, for instance, was that it demonstrated an effective Python script to present SQLite data cohesively. So onwards to iOS phones. Uh, one of the good advantages or differences between Android and iOS is that an iOS is being managed by one company, Apple, and therefore the phones all exhibit some commonalities where the hardware which are in them get increasingly complex and varied with each new phone. According to our text, many of the most interesting structures will be in the private VAR mobile folder. Although highly complex, the good news is that there are some regular structures in these. <coughs> So typical foldering for an app will contain a documents folder, a lib folder, a library folder, and an application bundle. This will vary depending on the actual hardware software that is being deployed, so care should be taken to look through each for possible relevant data. As our professor mentioned in her lecture, the consolidated.db file contains some pretty interesting stuff. Moving on to my lightning trip through the OSs, let's take a brief look at BlackBerry. All the research I've performed thus far seems to indicate that it is the most difficult to get data from, as after 10 password attempts, it wipes the phone and the data becomes unrecoverable. That's Punja and Murphy 2014. The good news is that it seems that if, a corp that if, that if it is a corporate phone, there's a way to push a clear password command to the device. Again, Punja and Murphy 2014. A look at the file structure of this device in comparison with Punjin Murphy 2014 indicates that the store folder contains many artifacts of interest, including installed apps, calendar, emails, address contact books, tasks, and reminders. And there are, all, uh, there are also logs which might be helpful. The SD card can also contains some of these databases, and it seems that some of the SD card areas used to extend applications where space might be taped tight in the main memory and processor. A word on the OS <clears throat> is a pr proprietary system, and a trip to the BlackBerry developer website really doesn't provide much in the way of an explanation of where things are kept on the phone. Better sources to try to mine for this would be Punja 2009 and Punja and Murphy 2014. One useful area is the store slash app world slash downloads folder, which contains the downloaded applications. You'll likely encounter many folders as you go through this process, or you're looking through images, with a .rem extension. These are encrypted files, which can only be decrypted by the device that encrypted them. But UFEDPA may be used to decrypt these files, according to Bunge and Murphy 2014. 
And when I used Oxygen, I found many of these, but they were essentially inscrutable, and they were sort of associated with different applications. So if you were doing an application, you'd find a lot of these .rem files, but no idea what was in them because they'd all had to be decrypted. So here's where I go into one of the more interesting and less traveled roads. I pulled the image of a Chinese MTK phone from the Oxygen download site, loaded it to Oxygen, and did some sleuthing. The phones which copy other commercial phones are referred to as Shanzai, which is imitated or pirated. Many of these phones are based on the MediaTek, which is also known as MTK chip, or the Spreadtrum chipped platform. Something like 90% of the phones in China presently, apparently. The reason it's so prevalent is probably due to low cost, the extensive software development kit which they gave, and that they look exactly like phones that are twice or three times as much. According to He et al. 2012, there are two primary areas in these phones, a user area and a system area. So here's what we look like if we actually take these from the oxygen image. Um, so the designations I've added here, user, system, flash-based, are just from studying the only paper I could find on the MT6235 processor, He et al. 2012. The user area is really what you would see if you plugged in the phone to a computer, so a visible file system. The system area was not visible, would not be visible using a computer. And the flash-based storage is, this is just a guess based on the content, which was movies, pictures, and that sort of thing. This might be sort of quasi-science, but results from careful comparison of the figures and text of He et al. 2012 to that of the image in the phone that I loaded in Oxygen, which share the same processor. Taking a closer look at the image supplied by Oxygen and using Google Translation, the file structure seemed to make a little more sense. It's a little tricky to lift the Chinese from the Oxygen platform, uh, which is why there are a few gaps in this, you know, right here, for instance. Uh, but the structures here can kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at and to find files of interest, depending on the case. Further work is to be done for the structures in the system area. There are various .dat files in the email folder, for instance, that are potentially of interest, such as the account.dat file, etc. Well, that's it for my first part of this presentation. Tony Lambert will be presenting on emulators next, and then John Martin will present on some emulators in action. Each of us will pose three to four questions in the references we provide below the video. Please choose a unique one. Do a little stupid around yourselves and post a paragraph or two in your results. Thank you very much for your attention.